Hi, welcome back. <clears throat> Since this game is fairly conventional in its movement, combat routines, um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of some of the uh, pertinent information. It's more or less some notes I've taken just to kind of help me out, and then I'm going to get started on playing the game. Uh, let's see, I think I went over stacking once. Um, I want to go back over zone of control effects. Um, land unit and zones control, <clears throat> they're affected by land and air zones control. Air units are affected by air zone of control only, and fleets are affected by air and fleet zone of control. We have sea transport, which is one land or air unit per fleet. There is no cost to embark or disembark. And transported units have no zone of control. There are paratroops in the game. They can airdrop two hexes. They can land in enemy zones of control or on enemy units. Supply is traced uh, 10 hexes over land or sea. If it's traced by land, it may not enter enemy land or air zones of control. And if it's traced by sea, it may not enter enemy fleet or air zones of control. Supply sources are capital cities, which are in red, uh, for the appropriate nationality. In addition, controlled cities of Gibraltar, Alexandria, Rome, Kiev, the America box, and the Cape Town box. Um, out of supply effects, you flip the unit over, and the units have a backside which um, is used to play another game not this game so um, when they're flipped over they'll look kind of funny uh, they cannot attack their combat strength is halved when defending rounding up and their movement allowance is reduced to one now the winter turns um, there's no movement or combat however we do perform strategic warfare in which we will do convoy attacks and strategic bombing and then there's a replacements and then a diplomacy phase replacements appear from the eliminated units as indicated on the record tra turn record track let's see if I can get an example here Woo. so where am I looking at So like here, um, what is that? Winter of 41. During the winter of 41, there are no reinforcements. However, there are um, replacement points. So Germany will get two replacement points, plus they get to roll for an ally. And Italy will get one replacement point, and they will also get to roll for an ally. And I think they roll first. And then the UK, France, they'll both get one replacement point, and then Russia will get four. And like I said, they can be used to rebuild uh, eliminated units. <clears throat> and back up to the sequence play once more. We do have reinforcement phase, movement phase, combat phase, and the supply phase. The reinforcement phase, the units will appear as they are on the turn record track. So Germany in the next turn. Uh, from the 1941 winter turn, we'll get uh, a 3-6, a 5-5, five, five, and a 0-40 unit in, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, in Germany. And the UK will get a 4-8 in London, and the Russians will get a 2-7. So that's pretty much how that works. Okay, the first turn is fall 1939. I'm going to try to play the game as historical as I can. We are going to start with the Axis player turn, the reinforcements phase. There are no reinforcements or replacements on the first game turn. Um, I think we're going to try for the invasion of Poland. I've set up a Polish forward defense like it kind of was in history. Um, 
yeah, that's near Danzig, whatever. Um, so we have a Polish unit here, Polish unit here, and a Polish unit here. And surrounding those units are German units. There's one armor, a couple air, the rest are uh, infantry. And I will probably move this subunit to the uh, strategic warfare box, which is basically America. Um, it's kind of the strategic warfare and stuff is abstracted. Uh, submarines have no zones of control, and they're not affected by zones of control, such as by fleets and air. And uh, they just basically go to the America box, and that's where they stay for the rest of the game until they're destroyed. <clears throat> I think that's only units that can go there. Let's see, for each Axis fleet, okay, convoy attacks, we can also use Axis fleets but they'll have to run the gauntlet of British air and naval units. So anyway, back to the invasion of Poland. Also, Italy is not in the game yet. They will not enter for a couple turns yet, about f one, two, three turns. Um, however, those units may move and do anything that's really non-combat. So <clears throat> anyway, back to Poland. Uh, since I set up in a forward defense, let's see, that would be 10 to 3. Sorry for my hands. This would be 5, 10 to 3, plus 3 if I wanted to. The ranges on air units is this little superscript here, the 2 in this case. So they could perform bombardment or air support or just whatever out to two hexes. So I placed that one and this air unit within range of Poland. We have an armor unit. Putting an armor unit close to Warsaw, I guess I should have said Warsaw earlier, um, because they're the only ones that can advance. So, to get down to it I guess, <clears throat> these guys are going to just go ahead moving around the uh, Polish unit zone of control here and enter this zone of control and this air unit will uh, help participate in that battle here these two to five and a five and the air unit the air unit will help in uh, against Warsaw while the two fives will attack this unit and the two fives will attack that unit um, just uh, to go ahead with movement, I'm going to move this fleet or sub sub fleet up into the America box, which is beyond her here, so they can conduct strategic uh, combat later. And let's see, the fleet will stay, and there's a fortress up here in Hamburg. So I think that's going to pretty much be it. So. <clears throat> let's go ahead and resolve the attack on Warsaw. Nah, let's keep suspense. Um, let's do this one. That's going to be 10 to 3 here. <clears throat> and that is going to be a 3 to 1. So, we're going to roll on the 3 to 1 table. Let's see if I can get my dice, uh, dice box in here so you can see something. Let's see. We roll the one. Let me get my thing to do its thing. There we go. We rolled the one on the three to one. Combat odds at that are no effect. Well, that's just not a good thing. Um, yep, three to one, one, no effect. So I'm kind of glad I didn't go ahead and. Uh, Try the attack on Warsaw. And we're going to have pretty much the same thing here. There's a 5 under here and then another 5, so that's going to be 3 to 1. Anything better than that would be great. Anything better than a 1. And we roll a 2. At 3 to 1, which is an exchange. Attacker and defender each would lose one unit. Polish uh, campaign is not going terribly well for the Axis player. So, both lose a unit. 
Well, that will destroy this Polish unit. And I guess... Zone of control there, zone of control there. We'll eliminate this uh, unit, the German unit. And it will go to the dead pile where it can hopefully be resurrected in the coming turns. The neutral units just <clears throat> go back and can be used again when other nationalities uh, need them when they've been invaded and such. Okay, there was no armor night attack, so nothing can advance. Let me double check that. <clears throat> Let's see. When a defender's hex is vacated as a result of combat, whether by elimination or retreat, any attacking infantry, armor, or paratroop units may advance into the hex. Armored units may then advance into a second hex. Such advances after combat may take place regardless of enemy zones of control. So, okay, that's the thing about armor. They can get two hexes. <clears throat> well, I don't have armor in that case, so... Attack there, but I will advance uh, the German unit one hex. Okay, this one has to pretty much succeed, or the Polish campaign will go into the winter, or yeah, the winter. Okay, we have what? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and we're going up to 3, so that's going to be 5 to 1. I'm fairly certain of that. Yes, 5 to 1 odds. So this one, <clears throat> I'm not going to show the die roll again. This one is going to be 5 to 1. It's the maximum table. We will gain the hex. Roll the 3 at 5 to 1. That is a D1. D1 is a defender loses one unit. So we will capture uh, Warsaw. I don't know if you can see it real well. if I get to where I want to go here. But the Polish the Polish uh, capital is in red, so it's basically a victory point. Um, hex. I don't know if I want to use the armor there at the moment, so I'm just going to move in with the 5-5. Five, five. And basically, uh, Poland is... Uh, Poland is captured. So... Anything that the Italians want to do, in a non-combat sort of way. They occupy Libya at the moment. Libya is actually a victory point hex too. So, I should have probably moved them at the same time as I did the Germans, but I think we're going to move... I think we're going to move their air unit down to Africa or because the Germans have enough. I think we're going to move it down to Libya. Um, or let me think here a minute. Sicily doesn't have a, a city or anything. And they only have a range of two. Libya won't matter until uh, we gain some more territory there. Um, I think we're just going to leave it right here in the Rome area for now, I guess. And with that, we finish the Axis part of turn one. And we will then, let's see, supply, everybody's in supply, they're within 10 hexes of a capital in their own city, whatever, in their own country. And uh, I think that's it for the moment. We'll proceed to the Allied part of the turn next. Okay, we're going to start the Allied half of the 19, yeah, fall of 19... 39. There are no rules really for the partition of Poland, this game being fairly simple, but 
I'm going to go ahead and move, uh, I guess we ought to go up to the action. Let's go up to the action here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and move uh, Soviet Army Group into here um, to act as a partition, <coughs> the partition of Poland. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, there's nothing for Vichy France either, so when it falls, we'll have to come up with something for them. There we go. Okay. Go back here a minute. Get on more solid uh, ground. Okay, allies, allies, allies. Let's start up in the north, I guess. Hmm. French covering Paris. But I'd also like to. Well, I guess we'll wait and see what happens. I would like to protect against an Allied uh, or an Italian attack down there, so I guess we will. We'll put an Italian unit down here in Marseille. I know you can barely see this. I guess it would help if I let you all in on the action. And we're going to put the air unit back in Paris for the moment. And I'm going to take the fleet, <coughs> French fleet, back up here a moment. There, we can still see things a little bit, and then I have a much wider range uh, view. And we are going to put this fleet over in Gibraltar. Because stacking lets me put two fleets in a hex. So we're going to just kind of buff up Gibraltar at the moment. <coughs> Or, because I'm not sure if France will make it long enough for me to really have any use for that fleet. I guess I could send it to the Middle East instead. Well, let's go ahead and send it to the Middle East. It's got 40 movement points. It should make it over to Egypt. And we'll just move it in that direction to help forestall any... Uh, any um, thoughts of a naval invasion by the Italians or something uh, but they'll lose the, the French will lose the fleet if they're uh, if they surrender other than that I'm not sure what I really want to do this is kind of the phony war and I'm not sure why I moved the Gibraltar fleet up there my homemade counter by the way it's not too bad I suppose um, so I think that we'll just kind of play out a Sitzkrieg for the rest of this. The Russians, they're pretty much where they're going to be for now. Zones of control are extended, uh, exerted all over there. So I think that's going to end the Allied, uh, allied uh, part of the first turn. So when I come back, we will be in the uh, winter of 40.